Hello and warm welcome to a new edition of our 20 minutes of excellence series of webinars. We are really happy and excited to see so many of you joining this webinar. So warm welcome again. My name is Roy Band. I'm a community manager at Milestone Systems. And today's session, as you probably know, is about the power of video content analytics. Today, uh, we'll be discussing several topics about the video content analytics space. And we'll be asking ourselves the question, why uh, do we need video content analytics? What is it? And uh, we'll also be discussing a little bit about the background of video content analytics and uh, the evolution of it. We also uh, talk about the current trends and the technology that is available today. What options do we have? And we also uh, tell you a little bit about how Milestone deals with video content analytics. How is it integrated? What integration options have, do we have? And uh, during this presentation, we we'll also show you some cool integration examples and demo videos with use cases to inspire you with all the possibilities and opportunities the open platform has. This presentation uh, will also be recorded. So if you want to review the session later, uh, you can do that and, and share it with your colleagues if you want to. Um, we'll notify you as soon as the uh, recordings will be published and go online on our website or on YouTube. US attendees are also able to ask questions during this session. We'll monitor them closely uh, and we'll try to answer all your questions at the end of this uh, presentation. Uh, on the right hand side of your, uh, of your window, you will see a go to webinar pane and you can type in your questions so you can uh, send them over and we'll try uh, to answer all of them. If we can't answer all of them uh, during this session, of course, we'll get back to you individually or we just create a new video with, uh, with a Q&A session separately. Enough about the uh, formalities, uh, let's continue with the webinar and uh, let's start with the first topic. What is video content analytics and why do we need it in the first place? So let's go. All right, great. So what is video content analytics and why do we need it in the first place? Well, basically video content analytics is a technology which usually comes as, but remember it's not limited to, um, a software system or computer program that has the capability to extract valuable information from video content. Basically it gives computers or machines the power of vision to help humans increase efficiency in many, many different ways. Uh, video content analytics is used in a wide range of industries and applications varying from industrial machine vision applications to professional sports applications to analyze game data and to create results. And obviously uh, more to our concern, it is a lot used in video surveillance systems and in the security industry. With the recent advancements in video analytics technology, Video surveillance systems and VMSs in particular are also finding more and more applications far beyond security. But let's discuss that later and I will tell you more about it as well. So video content analytics in the video surveillance industry was introduced somewhere around the mid 2000s when the majority of the video surveillance installations were mainly analog still. In the 80s, however, machine vision cameras already hit the market in the machine vision industry with the first smart camera being released by Xerox. This was basically an imaging device with an embedded processing unit. In the video surveillance industry, however, um, it wasn't until the mid 2000s when the first digital capture boards and DVRs became mainstream. And at that time, um, the first IP camera slowly gained traction. And maybe you still remember the first Axis NetEye 200 camera released by Axis in 1996. It was just two years before Milestone basically was founded. The digitization of analog signals uh, in the video surveillance industry provided the capability to apply uh, video analytics on the digitized video sources. Uh, while in the video surveillance industry, um, video content analytics was mainly used for motion detection for alarming and, and storage reduction, for example, in the industrial segment, the machine vision applications were a little bit more advanced to monitor production processes. They were already capable of detecting colors, doing counting objects and uh, sizing of objects, for example. So the big question is, why do we need video content analytics in the first place? And the answer is data, data, data. And uh, the amount of it in particular, basically. So video surveillance systems are capturing enormous amounts of data each day. And on top of that, video surveillance systems themselves are growing each year in size and resolutions. 
one single 4K camera is capable of capturing 250 gigabyte per day on average. So when we multiply that with the advancements in video technology, so let's say if tomorrow there will be an 8K or maybe a 10K camera available, plus the increasing frame rates and the increasing amount of cameras in, in an average system size, you can imagine that the data requirements are growing exponentially. The global data requirement is anticipated to reach 175 zettabytes of data for the global data requirement. A major part of that data is coming from video and a part of that also of course video surveillance. That's an exponential growth if you're looking at where we're coming from. And for us humans it has become impossible to monitor all that data and make some sense from it and to recognize patterns, patterns and trends. Also to review and search, it has become a complicated task with so much data uh, without proper data indexing. So just storing video is very unstructured and a waste of time and energy basically. As mentioned before, um, video content analytics has the capability to extract valuable information from video content in order to assist us as humans. This information is stored in our system in, in ExpertTech as metadata and it can help in a couple of areas. The first area is efficiency, and, and basically efficiency in real-time monitoring and detection. Human individuals have a limited capability to uh, process large amounts of information and, and video streams, uh, both physically but also mentally. In a big video surveillance installations, it's technically almost impossible to monitor all the video coming in effectively. And this is where video analytics can help to drive efficiency for the operator to only present relevant information that is being detected by the VCA system. The second area is a very important one and that's about forensic search. Finding information that you're actually looking for without spending too much time. As we already concluded, a large video installations capture large amounts of data and only by capturing and storing relevant information with help of video content analytics can greatly reduce your storage requirements and also the time spent for searching of relevant footage. Today's video installations uh, capture more than 30 days of video footage with over an average of 30 to 16 cameras in a small to mid-sized installation, this already equals to 30,000 hours of video content needs to be searched. So if you index your video content properly with metadata produced by video content analytics, you can gain great efficiencies in forensic search operations. And now let's discuss the third and last, but maybe today the most important part of, of the use case of video content analytics is business intelligence. Modern video analytics systems today can capture more information from a video source than they could 10 years ago. Where in the past you could only detect motion, yes or no, or maybe uh, we started uh, classifying objects at early stages, uh, maybe distinguish a, a car from a human for example. Today we can be really specific and classify each individual object in a video source. And uh, we can store that information uh, with metadata next to the video and we can analyze the data to create valuable insights to take preventive measures to mitigate risks to predict risks or to improve business processes so the data like we said before becomes really relevant and really important not only for security reasons but also far beyond security reasons because that data intelligence provides you really the big value of artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, by generating that metadata uh, in combination with, with video. And this is a really powerful tool. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about the background of video content analytics, let's discuss some of the deployment concepts that you can use. Video content analytics deployments can be done in mainly four ways. On premises, IoT edge, on the camera edge, and in the cloud. Now let's discuss all four of them and start with on-prem or server-based. This has been and still is one of the main deployment concepts today. With this solution, the servers are installed with video content analytics software on the customer side and it integrates directly into the cameras and into the VMS system to alert and to send over the metadata. These solutions bring easy centralized management and camera agnostic video analytics. This is ideal to upgrade existing camera systems without having to worry about the existing cameras. 
And at the same time, you can, can gain more value from any uh, video surveillance system. The second option that we have for deployment is the IoT Edge. And this is where an IoT device with the video content analytics is installed near the camera edge to analyze video and to send events and metadata to the VMS platform or to the cloud. This is ideal for remote locations where you require to provide intelligence to non-smart cameras or where the bandwidth is really limited and or if you want to run a very specific AI application. The IoT Edge device can run fully autonomously and only sends the metadata and events to the VMS or the cloud when required. This saves a lot of bandwidth of course. The Camera Edge is our third option and this is where the video content analytics resides inside the camera. This could be an embedded video content analytics solution provided by the camera vendor or it could be based on a third party plugin software like we see with more and more camera vendors like Hanwha, Axis, Mobotix and other products like the products powered by OSA. And just like Milestone Expertech is an open platform VMS, these cameras are basically an open platform camera allowing third parties to develop their video content analytics for those platforms which then integrates in their turn into the open platform VMS. The good thing about this solution is you don't need the heavy server infrastructures that you typically see in machine learning and deep learning applications and it really provides a cost effective AI machine learning solution. The last deployment option that I want to discuss with you is, is cloud. This is a video content analytics deployment where the analytics take place in the cloud or even partially in the cloud. Cloud deployments are rapidly growing because they are easy to deploy if you want to do, for example, a proof of concept and uh, it doesn't require large upfront investments. You pay per usage and it has ultimate flexibility. And at the same time, there's no need for service and maintenance because that has all been taken care of by the vendor. So if you want to know more about uh, cloud solutions and cloud deployments, check out my webinar, Journey to the Cloud, as this covers a lot of the pros and cons for cloud solutions. So now that we've dis discussed the different deployment options or different deployment scenarios, let's have a look at the different video analytics uh, technologies that are available today. And there are mainly two different technologies available. One is the traditional pixel-based solutions, and secondly, there's the AI-driven, AI-based solutions. And within the AI space, there's a lot of different technologies available as well. And currently, AI is being a big buzzword, and uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about this uh, technology. But more about AI later. Let's first explain the pixel-based uh, technologies. And to put it very simply, this technology analyzes a group of pixels in the pixel amount, the combined shape, the movement and direction to determine its object type or direction and relative position in the image. This method requires an accurate calibration for each camera or video stream for an accurate and reliable detection. Now AI driven video content analytics as you can imagine works quite differently compared to the traditional one. Again to put it very simply with AI-driven video analytics, the algorithm uses reference images to compare and to determine what it sees or detects. Those reference images come from a very, very large data set of pre-labeled images with metadata for a system to learn and to recognize what it sees. The bigger the data set, the more accurate the detection eventually will be and the more object classifications it can handle. Because of the high accuracy, it doesn't actually mean you don't have to consider a proper camera placement or a proper camera design. Because in the end, the VCA, the video content analytics, can't detect what it can see. And this goes both for the traditional video content analytics systems as the AI-driven video content analytics systems. So now let's discuss the topic about artificial intelligence because by far this is the biggest advancement in video content analytics technology since the recent years. So what is artificial intelligence and what is so intelligent about the systems that we are currently using? If you look at the definition of human intelligence, I would best describe this as the capability to process and understand one or multiple information sources and understanding its context. 
plus the ability to respond accordingly to this in the form of a conclusion or an adoption or to make decisions or maybe even to make future predictions. And honestly speaking, our brains are very good at making predictions anyway. With artificial intelligence, we as humans try to create machines that can mimic this capability. Within the AI space, we can distinguish two forms of AI, artificial narrow intelligence and general artificial intelligence. General artificial intelligence is by far the most advanced form of artificial intelligence and maybe even also the scariest one because of its potential and its power. This form of artificial intelligence is intended to think on its own and the goal of general artificial intelligence research is in to, to engineer an AI form that learns in a manner that matches or even surpasses human intelligence. General artificial intelligence is designed and to learn and to adapt to make a decision tomorrow that is even better than the one it made today. And this is not an easy deployment or an easy task. And this is why the most examples you will find and encounter today and also in our own video surveillance industry are in the form of narrow AI. Now narrow artificial intelligence relies on algorithms and programmatic responses to simulate intelligence, which generally focuses on one specific task. When we are talking about artificial intelligence, you've also probably heard of the terms machine learning and deep learning. Both machine learning and deep learning are a form of artificial narrow intelligence. First, let's have a look at machine learning. Machine learning is a rule-based algorithm which we allow a computing device access to a large data set to learn from. This example of a rule-based approach is one of the simplest form of artificial intelligence where the system operates on rules coded through if then else statements. However, machine learning can do a lot more. When it's presented a data feed, machine learning can also spot trends and patterns based on a set of tolerances or sensor inputs. Today, machine learning has advanced to deep learning. And deep learning is again a specific kind of machine learning which uses algorithms that uses artificial neural networks, which consists of decision nodes to train machine learning systems more accurately for a better, faster and more ac accurate outcome. Many of the video content analytics systems today uh, that are based on what we call artificial intelligence are using machine learning or deep learning algorithms with artificial neural networks. Now, as you can imagine, within the video content analytics industry, there are many, many applications and use cases available in the market. You can also imagine that it will never be possible to master all these different types of video content analytics use cases for a single company. And this is exactly why customers require an open platform and a strong community of technology partners to integrate best of breed solutions to fulfill customer requirements. Not only now, but also for in the future as technology evolves extremely fast. End users need a platform that is capable to accommodate new technology and new use cases as they are being developed. What is certainly don't want is a system that is locked in and forced to use proprietary technology. The world and technology is simply growing too fast for this. Just have a look on the milestone marketplace. There's already hundreds of technology partners already integrated into Xprotect to meet your requirements. How they integrate into a milestone Xprotect? I'll try to explain with help of our solution stack like shown here in the image. The solution stack consists of three layers, the application layer, the platform layer and the hardware layer. The middle platform layer represents the milestone platform. It consists of all the features and functionality a proper VMS should have, like support for compression standards, user management, security features, etc. etc. The hardware layer is where we integrate our cameras and device partners. Creating a limitless and seamless integration with any device partner uh, gives the uh, customers the freedom of choice to select the hardware to their requirements. And the top layer, the application layer is where we integrate with help of the milestone MIP SDK. And here we integrate all our video content analytics software partners. Now let's focus on the application layer at the MIP SDK a bit more, since this is where the most of the applications and uh, analytics applications is done. The MIP SDK offers expert some unique features like, for example, the metadata support. 
Since XProtect 2014, XProtect supports a metadata framework for camera and device integration. This allows cameras or devices to send a metadata stream to XProtect. In the beginning this was only used for events and motion bounding boxes, but obviously the metadata streams contained much more information that wasn't utilized in 2014 yet. The second option in the MAP SDK is centralized search and centralized search is a part of the uh, smart client and since 2019 centralized search allows easy forensic search in XProtect based on object characteristics derived from metadata. XProtect centralized search creates a vendor independent search tool from a unique single user interface within the XProtect smart client. The MIP SDK allows technology partners to seamlessly integrate their metadata into XProtect and allowing it to be searched for in a unified way. Since XProtect 2020, the MIP SDK also supports ONFIF metadata and this allows support for easy ONFIF compliant metadata generated by AI powered ONFIF devices. ONFIF metadata is a standardized format for sending metadata which makes it easy for technology partners to integrate metadata without the need of development based on the MIP SDK. Also uh, what was introduced in 2020 was the video processing toolkit as part of the MIP SDK. This extension of the MIP SDK allows technology partners to seamlessly integrate their video analytics services into XProtect to access video and to return metadata and re-encoded modified video to XProtect from their analytics servers or IoT Edge devices from anywhere, from any location. And last but not least, there's a driver framework in the MIP SDK and this gives the technology partners to develop their custom drivers for the XProtect platform for IoT and camera devices to support device specific functionality. And this can also of course be related to video analytics functionality for example. The future will always be hard to predict, or maybe not with help of AI. We do spot the trend of commoditization of standard machine learning capabilities within devices where they are able to do object recognition, classification and segmentation. We see more and more edge devices becoming available, capable of doing exactly this. A camera with AA capability will soon be mainstream. The second trend I see is the cloud technology. Cloud is an interesting upcoming concept for AI video analytics because of the low investment requirements, low to zero maintenance cost for the end user and easy deployment scenarios. If you want to do a proof of concept, for example, at a customer site, you can deploy this within an hour without large investments. Also, video analytics on demand and pay per use is an interesting proposition for many businesses. For example, due to the pandemic today, you want to use face mask, detec mask detection. Next week, you need people counting or heat mapping features. Finally, it's about the uh, advancements in video content analytics technology. Where today most of the video content analytics are rule based, for what we mentioned uh, as commoditization of simple AI in uh, in the edge devices, for the near futures I see more and more video analytics that can detect and understand the context of events and behavior and systems are more and more capable of learning and training itself. Especially for security use cases, understanding behavior will be one of the next steps in artificial intelligence. Are people actually fighting or hugging? Is this person stealing or doing something different? Are people waving goodbye or reaching out for help or throwing objects? Did a car stop or did it crash? These are all questions that, that AI can help us with. AI is here to stay and will help us humans to make difficult tasks quite easy, but it must be done in a right and responsible way. AI and video analytics is a powerful technology and has to be used responsibly. This is why the European Union is preparing AI regulations as we speak. This was already it for this presentation. I hope you liked it and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any uh, further questions, uh, please do send me an email. Uh, my email address is uh, next to me in this uh, slide. So uh, please don't hesitate and uh, looking forward to seeing you at a next webinar. See you soon. Bye bye.